with his friends and family at his side, Harry Carey entered the final inning. His wife, Duchy, along with hundreds of admirers, gathered today at Holy Name Cathedral for a celebration of a man who was larger than life. I heard Father Smith say the Mass of the Resurrection. Please, Father, don't resurrect him. We couldn't go through this again. <laughs> Harry always left his fans laughing. His funeral was no different. His friends remembered only the best of times from a lifetime of good cheer. Every time they go to the doctor, he would whine, just can I have a couple martinis? And then finally, the doctor got tired of his whining and said, you could drink. And Harry got all excited. The doctor said, you can have two martinis if the Cubs make it to the World Series. I say, what does it take to be such a close friend of Harry's? I said, it's easy. Unlimited stamina, a cast iron stomach, keep your bag packed and your divorce lawyer on retainer. <laughs> I was privileged to go with Dutchie to make the final arrangements at All Saints Cemetery. And I said, Dutchie, I'm glad you chose this type of internment. Because Harry and I'd be driving, and we, he used to laugh, and he says, Boy, when I die, I hope they don't cremate me. I'll burn forever. <laughs> and Harry's grandson, Chip, will take his grandfather's place in the broadcast booth at Wrigley Field. And he says the funeral today was the perfect tribute to his grandfather. It was something like we've never heard before. Harry's friends included, of course, presidents, politicians, Hollywood stars, players, and, of course, always the fans. Many of them attended today's funeral. ABC 7's Brad Palmer is live at Harry Carey's restaurant with more on that story. Brad? Well, Joel, I was visiting with uh, Skip Carey, Harry's son, last night, and he was talking about his father's widespread appeal, how uh, not only the big wigs loved him, people like former President Ronald Reagan and our First Lady Hillary Clinton, but the bleacher bums as well. And Skip said that's a statement that not many people can make very true. But our gover governor made a similar observation at this morning's service. I was watching all the people that were there, and it's all walks of life were here to pay tribute to Harry Carey because he appealed to all walks of life. Mike Ditka gave reporters the wave off. Bob Costas came in from St. Louis and Brent Musburger from New York. Jim Riggleman skipped the Cubs' Cactus League opener to attend along with three of his players. And among the former Cubs were Ryan Sandberg and Rick Sutcliffe. You know, Harry would be wanting us to celebrate his life right now rather than getting all caught up in, in his death, and uh, it's hard to do. There was a lot of emotion going in there, be it uh, happiness, joy, laughter, and then also uh, deep sadness. There were many laughs there, and, you know, uh, he, was, uh, he always had a smile and a handshake for people, and he truly made baseball. He connected the fans. Many times he didn't even go see the game. They wanted to hear Carey's song. They wanted to hear Harry Carey. I can remember... Where Seventh inning, and Harry gets up, and all of a sudden, I sit on the, uh, the windowsill. They open the window. He says, get in the back, Bush. This is my act. <laughs> he always wanted to do it alone. Harry was the whole show, and I knew it. Yes, but Harry and Jimmy had some great years together on the south side with the White Sox. But it was Yosh Kawano, the Cubs clubhouse man of the past six decades, who may have summed up Harry the best. He had time for you. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to get Yosh Kawano to go on camera on a microphone for the past 30 years. He's never done it. I says, you got to do it for Harry, and he hit a home run. Yeah, Harry, as he, Yosh said, he always had time for you. And I think uh, Harry would appreciate that very much. From outside of his restaurant, Brad Palmer, ABC 7 News. Joel? Thanks much, Brad.